what is the problem that Fan Fury is uh, is answering? What what are the goals of Fan Fury? Give me the broad strokes here. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, um, really speaking, I mean, I touched upon this, um, which is like, you know, the monopolistic side of the industry itself. You're looking at like five companies worldwide that really speaking control the market. And I'm really talking like 95% of the market. Um, and, and this is huge when it comes to revenue, because you're looking at a $21 billion, uh, you know, revenue market that's being essentially divided between four or five different companies. Um, the idea here is also that, um, you know, when these companies are looking at distributing their revenues, you're not looking at, you know, huge outputs, you're not looking at huge payouts. They're taking large, large rake fees, sometimes up to 22%. Um, and really speaking, paying out very, very few people. You know, you're looking at maybe a 45% payout ratio. Um, a lot of times what, you, what we've also seen in the fantasy sports market, and this is like, I've seen this personally here in India as well, where, um, you know, you have the platforms themselves, um, you know, organizing tournaments, um, scoring those tournaments, um, you know, then actually going ahead and organizing fantasy sports matches on that and then, you know, giving out points and prizes. I mean, that's really speaking, I mean, the end all of it. Let's pause this interview really fast because we have to give away a $500 NFT. Now, it's not going to be Fan Fury, and the reason for that is because they haven't released yet. They're, they're, they're still in pre-launch, fair launch. There's, they're, you know, they're still coming out with stuff in a week or two. But what if we give away a $500 NFT with a project that they are partnered with called Teratops, okay? It's a sports NFT with a sports jerseys on the NFT valued at $500, okay? So it's not cheap. It's something very valuable. Uh, all you have to do is comment down below something that is was very interesting to you uh, in our AMA so far or, or continuing past us, okay? So what is something about Fan Fury that you are excited about that's interesting to you that is very like revolution uh, in there? You know, just get, give me something good. Anyway, we're gonna be picking that NFT and Adrian will be sending that NFT to the one lucky winner. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let's continue this AMA. What's going on, cowboy? In this video, we've got a new crypto project here and we need to find out, is this worth our time and money or is this a pass? It's called Fan Fury, and we have the founder, the CEO, the mind behind it all. His name is Adrian, and we need to find out, hey, is he someone, is his team something that we could trust, could we invest in or not? It's, it has to do something with fantasy sports, with community ownership, profit sharing, all that kind of stuff. So we need to really dig into this. If you're new to this channel, my name is Aaron. I'm going to journey to my next Bitcoin while helping you to your next Bitcoin. And I'm, I'm not your financial advisor, just a lizard brain cowboy exploring as many crypto projects out here just to make some money, okay? That's the bottom line here we're just trying to we're trying to find some good projects to invest in to see some high returns and how we how do we determine these good projects well sometimes we go on youtube and we look at these other youtubers and we're like they're just talking about some project and they're getting paid behind the scenes they're not disclosing that to us and they're like it's this weird like this fake shilling that I'm so tired of, you know what I'm saying? So what I want to do is I want to interview straight from the horse's mouth to our cowboy ears, to our lizard brain. What kind of project are we getting invested in? What kind of projects are we getting involved in? So we have Adrian. He's the founder behind this project called uh, uh, Fan Fury. And we need to find out, hey, is this a good project or can we pass? Adrian, welcome to the hot seat. Thanks a lot, Aaron. It's awesome being here. And as soon as you say cowboy boots and lizard brains, the first thing I think of is Jim Morrison, man. Uh, very, very cool vibe you've got going here. I really like it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. My name is Adrian. I'm actually the CEO of Fan Fury. Um, it's great to be here, Aaron. We've got a lot to talk about. Good deal. Just so you know what the concept is here. I, I mean, I just so everyone knows, knows, I'm getting compensated for this video. And you're here. You, I want you to talk about your project with like you know all the wisdom and insight that you could possibly muster up and it's for the for the uh the viewer here for anyone who's for any cowboy who's watching and uh wanting to invest in something and so i want you to like really come at us with what the yep. project's all about but before we even get to fan fury i want to know about you what's your background in you know co coming into crypto before fan fury yeah, so um, I've actually uh, been a designer for a little over 10 years now. Uh, my background is actually in product design and uh, game design. Uh, so I've worked with a whole lot of, uh, you know, companies, both international and uh, domestic, doing, uh, uh, you know, sort of consumer apps and consumer games over the last 10 years. Uh, my job has been mainly around uh, the product design itself. It started with UI, UX, um, and then I sort of moved into concept design, which is where I sort of ended up, um, you know, with my last job. Um, weirdly enough, in financials, um, you know, fintech um, and, and, and the financial domain, um, which is actually speaking, you know, where I actually got into uh, the crypto space. Um, really speaking, you know, uh, blockchain was sort of taking off in, in the, the fintech um, space and, um, you know, being a designer, being a product designer, 
journey. You really want to stay ahead of the trends. You know, you want to get ahead. You want to make sure you're, um, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians, uh, so to say. So um, attended my first blockchain conference within, you know, the organization itself. Uh, it was one that was organized by the organization. Uh, so I really got an insight into, you know, Bancor and some of the, uh, you know, early guys into the space, uh, you know, which is where I didn't jumped into sort of the trading side of things um got caught up in the luna wave really so to say um towards the end of 2020 and then mirror and anchor came out really hit the market huge um so i sort of aped in uh, you know to the entire luna system and then uh, i mean to be honest for me it was more a uh, 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 you know knowledge based approach rather than anything i'm going to be honest i wasn't really one of those who uh, was looking to get rich quick um, that's not really the reason i got into crypto uh, for me it was really the um, you know the the beauty behind the uh, blockchain side of things and the actual technical side of things that brought me into the space itself you know the privacy around uh, blockchain and bitcoin was just sort of this enigmatic thing that drew me to it um, so weirdly enough my first buy was dogecoin um, you know got caught up in the wave made like an 8x um, in one day and thought i was this mad guy uh, you know got caught up in <laughs> in a lot of trading and margining margin trading and uh, you know as they say got wrecked uh, but uh, yeah like, that was you know really my introduction into uh, the crypto market itself sort of you know this this weird uh, uh, wave of knowledge mixed with enthusiasm excitement and then just getting wrecked all over um, but yeah I mean uh, to be honest uh, post that um, you know for the most part we've always I've always wanted to build um, been a builder for my, on multiple occasions just nothing really taken off but um, this was a good opportunity for us looking at the ecosystem itself being very young um, and looking at the sports world I've been a sports um, you know fan sports person all my life so um, you know fantasy sports has been part of me for um, a little over 15 16 years um, you know being, being playing fantasy sports with my brothers with my friends um, so this has been you know a long time coming to be honest we've looked at the space it's it's pretty much a monopolistic space you know when you think about it uh, very few companies really controlling this entire huge uh, industry um, so when we looked at it we really felt like you know the blockchain was one of the best Best ways for us to decentralize this entire industry both in terms of um, ownership as well as in terms of you know the real money that goes into the market itself and i'll get into how fan fury does that gotcha so as, just as a summarization that you have a background in design a background yeah. in design particularly fintech and then that got you in and then you just have a side hobby of being a fan like fantasy sports yeah and so when you yeah. merge all that together you kind of get something like fan fury now tell me what is the problem that Fan Fury is uh, is answering? What what are the goals of Fan Fury? Give me the broad strokes here. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, um, really speaking, I mean, I touched upon this. Um, which is like, you know, the monopolistic side of the industry itself. You're looking at like five companies worldwide that really speaking control the market. And I'm really talking like 95% of the market. Um, and, and this is huge when it comes to revenue, because you're looking at a $21 billion, uh, you know, revenue market that's being essentially divided between four or five different companies. Um, the idea here is also that, um, you know, when these companies are looking at distributing their revenues, you're not looking at, you know, huge outputs. You're not looking at huge payouts. They're taking large, large rake fees, sometimes up to 22%. Um, and and really speaking, paying out very, very few people, you know, you're looking at maybe a 45% payout ratio. Um, a lot of times what, you've, what we've also seen in the fantasy sports market, and this is like, I've seen this personally here in India as well, where, um, you know, you have the platforms themselves, um, you know, organizing tournaments, um, scoring those tournaments, um, you know, then actually going ahead and organizing fantasy sports matches on that, and then, you know, giving out points and prizes. I mean, that's really speaking, I mean, the end all of it, right? I mean, uh, where who do you trust at the end of the day, if, if the fantasy sports platform itself is organizing the sports? and then you know deciding on things so i think when it comes to you know really speaking the the data itself that these guys are using uh being able to manipulate that data any way they choose that's a huge problem in the market um you know being able to manipulate the results and the contests is a huge problem in the market um and then generally speaking just in terms of the number of people who are winning um you know you're looking at a win rate of bit, between 35 and 40 percent which is really really minuscule so um you know fan fury really speaking looks at solving all those problems um, you know right from the data side of things um you know, we've decentralized our data end to end. Um, and this has been a task, I'm going to be honest, because how many, um, you know, platforms do you know right now that have decentralized sports data? Um, for the most part, our oracles are dealing with finance and fintech. So to, you know, really speaking, find an oracle provider that had the kind of, you know, sports data that we were looking at 
was a real task. So um, we've had to really speaking define a lot of the ecosystem that we've wanted to work in. We've sort of been able to define our universe, so to say, um, being able to really speaking, uh, you know, define out our oracles. We're working with three different oracle providers and uh, multiple different API providers when it comes to sports data. So what we've done is we've ensured that the data that's coming in is validated at different levels. Uh, first at the raw data output level and then at the fantasy sports uh, data level. So we're really speaking decentralizing everything when it comes to the data side of things. And then when it comes to the, you know, manipulation from a platform standpoint, we can really step back and say that like, you know, we have zero interaction with the smart contracts or with the data itself. Data flows in directly into the smart contracts. The smart contracts pull that data and use it to um, either show your matches, take your, um, you know, take your contests, um, uh, uh, essentially your entries into contests, make sure that, you know, your pools are being paid out correctly. Um, so really speaking, our entire experience um, is handled by the smart contracts themselves, right from the um, the contests being, um, you know, opened to the payouts actually happening and then the rake fee being distributed. Um, again, the rake fee, like I said, in most of these other platforms, they're skimming people at, you know, 8 to 22%. Um, what we've done is we've really speaking fixed that at a, uh, at a 5%. And, 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 you know, being able to fix it at a 5% for us has done tremendous uh, amounts because from a fantasy sports standpoint, that's like an industry low across any platform anywhere. But from a blockchain standpoint, you're not looking at a very high, um, you know, you're not looking at a very high fee when you save 5%. So what this has done for us, really speaking, is, is to be able to distribute our, um, you know, our rewards to our stakers in a non-inflationary way, um, which most platforms are not able to do, right? I mean, most of your staking rewards in general cases come from inflationary tokenomics or they come from fees. Um, and what we're saying is we're not going to pay it out from either one of those. What we're doing is paying it out from profits, which means that it's coming from your circulating supply itself and then by essentially having a burn mechanism on the contests itself what this does is you have a circulating supply from within the circulating supply you're giving out your profits and then from within that circulating supply you're also burning so not only do you have a non-inflationary reward mechanism it actually makes it deflationary because of that burn in place so we have we have um, close to zero inflationary tokenomics when it comes to rewards when it comes to lp rewards when it comes to staking rewards when it comes to um you know um any of these reward mechanisms that generally speaking platforms use to incentivize uh, you know behavior <clears throat> okay hold on let me just uh, this cowboy just went the 50 miles an hour here okay so let me just break this down into three problems that i heard and then i think you gave me two solutions and we still need to get to the third let's let's start here the first problem is the data manipulation by current uh, fantasy sports platforms that in this way that they manipulate data on two levels, the raw data and the fantasy level of data. And so they manipulate that data so that they can manipulate who wins and how much they win. Okay, so that's the first one, data manipulation. The second one is win rate. Win rate is uh, the just the amount of win rate. You said 25 to 30% is like the average win rate right now. And you said that's very low. That's one of every third, one of every fourth or so. And so that the win rate is very low. The third problem is the payout is that when do people do win? There's so the, the, the rake fees or if you no one knows what a rake fee is, a rake fee is like the commission that the platform takes. Uh, it, so that's the fees basically that that's so high that it reduces the payout for the actual winner. So there's three problems, data manipulation, win, low win rate percentage, low payout. And so what you're saying with Fan Fury, you're saying the data manipulation, it all starts there. And it starts with uh, decentralized data with multiple oracles. You said three oracles and multiple APIs that really kind of cross-reference. So there's no manipulation. And that it, bring, and it, it, it brings it into those two places, the raw data and the fantasy level of data, those two levels of data. After that, you're gonna. I, I don't think you talked about the win rate, but you did talk about the payout, and you're saying that the low rate fees come from the circulating supply, five percent rate fees as opposed to forty. I think you said thirty to forty percent rate fees. Um, rate fees are generally around um, eight to twenty-two percent. Oh, eight um, to twenty-two percent. Yeah. So it's already lower. So so let's say twenty percent rate fees on average. You're yeah. doing it at five percent rate fees. 5%, that means yeah. yeah. That means a higher payout for the winners. Yeah. Does that yeah. su summarize exactly what you were just talking about right there? Is that, is that 
Absolutely. Okay. And let me touch upon a, a little bit of that again to sort of break that down, um, you know, in exactly those three points, because that's really important. Um, I think the payouts, when it comes to the payouts, like you said, um, really low payouts, uh, you know, 35, 40 percent. That's what we're looking at. In Fan Fury, what we've done is we've taken that and upped it right up to 75 percent. So um, on any given contest, you're going to have a 75 percent win rate um, out of every 100 participants. And um, one of the things that we've uh, been able to do, you know, um, being a blockchain platform, Platform, is the 25% that don't win, we've been able to incentivize them with a 5% cash back. So if you are part of the 75%, you have a winning coming in. If you're part of the 25% that's just not cut it, you get a 5% cash back on whatever your entry is. Okay, so, okay. Really so speaking- let, me, let me just get those numbers straight. So you're saying for a win rate, meaning 75% who enter will win. And if you're not yep. part of that, you get a 5% cash back. Yep. yep. Perfect. And then your payouts, how much are your payout percentages again? 95% payouts. 95% payouts. Yeah. Because I mean, we are taking the previous 45%. 45% payouts from yeah. other platforms. Yeah. So, uh, so let me put it this way. Um, uh, payouts are basically, um, rake fee or rather total price pool minus the rake fee. So that's 95% basically. So, cause we've only taken a 5% rake fee. So you got 95% of your pool to distribute. Uh, that pool is being distributed among 75% of the participants, which in other cases is 40%. And then the rake fee itself, which on other platforms is close to 20%, in our case is 5%. That's amazing. And all this is possible just simply with blockchain technology. Pretty much. And and to be honest, we've not even spoken about that 5% cashback. That cashback is part of the remaining 25% that don't win. You know, the guys that are just not good enough, they get a 5% cashback on every game. Wow. And so you're, you're saying that pretty much everyone is walking away with some kind of money. You're, you're either much. winning or you've got that consolation prize of like yeah. just 5%. And that makes sense. You, this is fantasy football you, you, or fantasy yep. sports. There has to be losers. So um, I don't believe in uh, <laughs> consolation prizes or trophies or anything like that. So, okay. Um, so, okay. So how, do, how is this possible? And, and what's your plan? What, what, what's this, so, what's the, what's the plan here? Give me the, give me the first, how is this possible first? Uh, talk to me a little nerdy with this, uh, with like the oracles. I know you got into it a little bit, but if anyone's like really interested, what kind of smart contracts are you, what's the connection here? Uh, how long did this take you? I want to know a little bit of the nerdy stuff here. No, sure, sure. So um, we've actually been building for a little over six months now. Um, when we started really speaking, uh, we were working with Band, we we're working with Chainlink, we we're working with Supra, and none of them have sports data. So what we've had to do is we've really speaking had to, one, define the data that the oracles are going to validate, and two, um, actually make those oracles so that they can validate that data. So we're working with, uh, one, we're working with sports data providers themselves, guys like, um, you know, sportsdata.io and, um, uh, you know, uh, the Premier League, uh, people that really speaking, uh, collect this data. Um, so once we've got these guys, what we need to do is uh, get them talking to our Oracle providers, which is Band, Supra, Chainlink, um, and essentially get them to validate the data points that we require. So there are like raw data points that we require in order for us to process the, that those data points and turn them into fantasy sports. So the first step is really speaking, getting these oracles to validate that initial raw data. Once we've got the validated data, we feed it into a smart contract um, that essentially calculates the fantasy points. Um, so we don't do that off chain. We do that on chain. The fantasy sports points are being calculated on chain, um, which basically then sends it to a second oracle um, which validates those fantasy points. Um, once the fantasy points are validated, we use that to essentially get the uh, get the get the fantasy sports matches, get the data that's required for the matches, the players, the credits, um, essentially all the good stuff. Okay, so we go from raw data to validate first round of validations, then yep. to smart contracts, then to a second yep. round of validations, yep. then to payouts. Yep. Then awesome. to the actual starting of the games. Um, this is this is like your games haven't even started yet. Um, we're actually, th- this whole thing is just validating data right now, right? Because like what we're doing here is we've really had to define out an entire ecosystem of data. And this is data that other platforms are going to be used, betting platforms, gambling platforms, you know, every single platform that uses sports data is now going to have access to data on chain, which didn't exist before. And this is like cross chain data. Um, so this really speaking is just the data side of things. Um, you know, once we've got the data side of things in place, we then move on to like the actual creation of the games themselves. So um, 
what our platform now needs to do is it needs to use this data to now pull in, let's say, what games are happening today in which sports. Um, in those, uh, you know, games, uh, what contests are we having? How many of these contests are, let's say, large con large pool contests versus how many of these contests are player versus player contests? Um, and that's where the real, you know, gameplay action starts. So your your our entire application depends a lot on the on this decentralized data that's coming in. So once we've been able to decentralize the data side of things, then our application is able to use that data to say, what do we need to do with this? Okay, so you're saying this application uh, is just accessing uh, tons of data. Do you, yep. I, I know you have already have an application. Can you show us uh, how far you are in this whole process? Um, do you have like a working product here, like a working platform? Yeah, absolutely. We, we absolutely do have a working platform um, running right now. Um, actually, to be honest, it's um, we, we've got a web version and an Android and a, a mobile version right now. The mobile version, really speaking, does the gameplay um, versus the web version, which actually handles the staking and bonding side of things. Um, so, um, yeah, we can actually I can actually show you the uh, website of things right now. But uh, do you want to maybe look at the uh, I'd actually like to come and touch on the fan clubs a little later on, uh, if that's OK with you. But yes, I, we can actually do absolutely do a demo a little show me the on. money here show me the money what's going on so essentially what we've got here is uh the web version what you're looking at is matches that are happening uh either today or later today so um you know we've got um uh, Pretty, we've got about five different leagues that uh, that you can enter right now. We've only got football for the time being, soccer, um, but we're going to have uh, cricket and we're going to have the North American sports come in as well. Um, so what you're seeing here is different contest pools. Well, let's go back actually. What you're seeing Good here picks is actually with, with uh, football or soccer and um, yeah, and cricket. I heard cricket is a massive, massive sport. It is. So. It is. It is. Yeah. Like just to give you some some thoughts, um, the entire blockchain world um, put together we've got about 100 million wallets um india and in india uh, we've got a platform here in india called dream 11 and dream 11 itself has 130 million users active users oh, golly. yeah so when i say it's massive like it is massive and th yeah. this is like just an indian audience we're not even talking world audience because like yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's geofenced so it's massive um but yeah we've essentially coming we're coming out with um <clears throat> football first and then cricket and then the north american sports and it, the main thing for us is like the, the decentralized data, right? Because we yeah. can pull as many sports as we want, but like, what's the point if it's not decentralized? So um, really speaking, that's been the big gameplay for us, making sure that like our data is decentralized end to end. Um, and right now we're at football, but I think cricket is on the way. And then we've got, like I said, uh, big things coming up with the MMA as well. Um, so once you're in here, you've essentially got like single entry contests and uh, you've got multi entry contests as well. Um, so single entry contest contests are generally speaking one on one. You could be one on one as in uh, two players. You can be one on one. Um, you know, up to five players, ten players, um, and you'll also eventually have the ability to have um, you know your own pools, uh, be able to create your own pools with your own friends, um, invite people in and have your own contests. Um, so generally speaking, if you're uh, trying to enter one of these contests uh the first thing you're going to have to do is um come in and uh, create a new team um and the way that you create a team is there are like certain obviously restrictions on how you can create one right so you can't you can't really let's say select um every player from um a single side so you're going to have to be judicious with the way you select your players um and i think also in terms of like the amount of credits you've got versus um you know how you're going to actually be able to spend those credits um so the idea here is that you should be able to ideally only select um, um, or rather you shouldn't be able to select only good players. Um, the idea is that you need to balance your team out between, let's say, really good players and, and, and some of the average players um, because then it doesn't become fun, right? I mean, what's the idea if you're, if you're going to be able to select all the really good players? Um, so the idea here is that once, you're, once you've selected your team, um, where is it? I'm not allowing it to... Yeah, so you've got like a cap on le like the level of player that you could play. Pretty pick much, up yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Um, yeah, perfect. So yeah, you got a you got basically a cap on the number of players as well as you've got a cap on the amount of credits as well. So um, the idea is that you should be able to only select, let's say, you know, some good players and some uh, average players. Let's say, for example, um, once you've you're done selecting your players and to be honest like i, I want to make this like 
you know really clear um in terms of the gameplay we are we're going for a strictly fantasy sports gameplay we're not changing much in terms of like the experience itself because one of the things that we want to play off is we want to play off the fact that like we are, our learning curve is is really 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 you know steep you don't need to be able to come in and learn we've got a fantasy sports audience that is like a couple of billion people we don't need to teach these guys something new all we need to do is show them the platform and tell them that you're getting better rewards and that's all they need to move over so really speaking what we want to do is to make sure that the experience we're offering people is is as um you know similar as what they're really right now uh, you know used to so when you're looking at the experience itself like in terms of like how you're going to go through stuff it really speaking is exactly like um you know you would if you were <clears throat> let's say on any other uh, uh, you know fantasy sports platform so once you've created your team um you could just go ahead and join the contest and and like like i said depending on you know whether you you're joining a pool that has multiple entries or a single entry uh you can choose to have uh, multiple teams here um so as soon as you're joining the contest um what we're doing here is uh, if you notice all the contest entries are in dollars but when you're paying your fees you're paying them in fury and and really speaking what we're doing here is you're actually paying a dollar amount of fury whenever you're entering a contest um so the idea here is that as soon as you create your doll your as soon as you 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 make your your entry what the system is doing is it's essentially buying fury at a certain dollar amount and entering that dollar amount of fury into the contest pool um so one of the things that like i i want to you know sort of touch upon i'm just going to stop sharing for a moment sorry um it's just going to create the pool while it creates the pool um i just want to get into the tokenomic side of things um so basically the idea here is that we've got a deflationary token now uh, we've got 420 million tokens that are um, right like created right off the bat and we, we don't mint anymore um but the way that the uh, tokenomics works is that when you're entering a contest uh, our contests are essentially um <clears throat> are priced in dollars but are paid for in fury so what this does is uh, when you're actually entering a contest let's say you've got a 10 dollar contest pool i'm making sure i collect 10 dollars from every single person even though they may be paying a different fury amount whenever they're entering so your, whatever the price of fury is it doesn't matter the point is that you're paying 10 dollars worth of fury whenever you enter now on my side i need to make sure that the price pool like the integrity of that price pool is maintained right i can't tell you that the price pool is like 10000 dollars and pay you 8000 so the way that i maintain that price pool or the integrity is that as soon as your your you make your payment of fury i immediately turn that into usd on my side and i'm holding this price amount in usd so what this does is like the integrity of the price pool is always maintained no matter no matter like what the time difference is between entry and exit so when uh, it comes time for me to make my payouts um, you know the game is over everything is done uh, i've got my winners i've got everything done uh, and i need to make sure that i'm paying out my my participants what i do at that point is i make a single transaction where i'm essentially converting all my usd into fury to make my payout so even the payouts themselves are actually being done in fury at the price at which fury is at that point so in terms of the burn mechanics right like the burn mechanics are really really closely related to the price of fury at that point in time um so when you're let's say um, you know converting your uh, usd back into fury at that point what's the price of fury how many dollars worth of fury are you burning so if the price of fury is really really high you are essentially burning very very little fury so you can maintain the overall value of the pool versus if the price of fury is really low you're putting a lot of pressure on the supply itself making sure that because you've got a certain amount of game volume with a diminishing supply what you can do is put a certain amount of pressure on the price so, so you, really speaking you're like, using the the fees to balance out the overall price of fury it doesn't matter if it vo it's volatile you're still paying peg to that $10 price point you yeah, always to always to the price pool but also when it comes to the payouts and the burn like it's the burn itself is always pegged to the to the price of fury and that's important because like um you know because the because you have a fixed supply of fury um what this does is if you have like a low price of fury you're always going to have let's say a certain dollar amount of uh, transactional volume from the game right so what this is going to do is because you've got a certain amount of transactional volume you're always going to be burning a certain dollar amount of fury so let's say that dollar amount on a daily basis is like 2 million dollars worth of fury it sort of puts this sort of um, you know this pressure on the token itself because because it's a fixed supply and you're burning like a dollar amount every single game so 
what happens is like if the price of fury is low let's say it's a 10 cents and you're burning two million dollars worth of fury you're essentially burning 20 million fury tokens um, if so let's say the price of fury is at a dollar you're essentially burning two million fury tokens and really speaking right. what this does is because you have a fixed token supply and a fixed circulating supply or rather relatively fixed circulating supply this is going to put a huge amount of pressure on the token price itself if not to push it up at least to prevent it from falling too much God, and, and you bring it to use to some that's like utility for the token like that's why it gives purpose to why it's being used why it's being bought absolutely and then there's always utility because like because of the fact that we're marketing it to fantasy sports users this this game is not marketed at crypto uh, we don't care about our crypto users to be honest we're marketing this to fantasy sports users like with that we're, we're taking on re, you know DraftKings and FanDuel like head on, we, we've, we've got the wherewithal to take them on simply because like on a DraftKings or a fan deal, they can offer you like a four week, um, um, you know, honeymoon period, let's say, where they're giving you like a cash back or whatever it is. They can't do it indefinitely. Like they've got an 800 million marketing budget right now that they exhaust on a single player in four weeks. So our thing is that we don't need that. Essentially what we can do is we can have a 75% payout as well as a 5% cash back and still be able to like, easily easily have a profit that we're paying out to our stakers so because of the fact that one um, we can have a retention strategy that is basically 100 percent payout uh, and two because we have a, 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 a marketing strategy that really speaking is talking to our fantasy sports users we don't need to worry about that budget that dream 11 uses or, or DraftKings uses to you know bring their customers in because like really speaking what 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 we want to do is um, you know, by putting the platform into the hands of fantasy sports users, what we're saying is that, look, you guys play fantasy sports anyway. Why not? Why not come and own the platform itself? You know, um, why not come and actually take part in the ownership of the platform rather than going somewhere, else, putting your money there and paying it out to somebody else? Sure, <clears throat> sure. And and on top of that, it's the it's the um, the honesty, integrity or trustless system that you're using for the, the data. I think that it, it all starts there. And I think you'd agree with that. OK, let me get some of the rapid fire questions going in. Uh, how big yeah. is your team? We've got close to 16 members now. Most of these guys are techies. Um, we've got a full-fledged marketing team. We've got a full-fledged design team. Um, so yeah, we're, we're actually a pretty big team. Um, right now, guys, if you guys haven't seen, uh, I've been doing research on them. I tried to, and I couldn't find anything. There's one, probably one obscure YouTube video that has like a hundred views on it. And so, and then like, I'm going to put this out in a couple of days. So your marketing has not started yet. Um, what's no. the total marketing budget for you, for yourself here? Um, so really speaking, um, the way that the platform is, is designed, uh, the way that the tokenomics are designed, uh, the, it, the, the platform really speaking has a marketing budget that's like sustainable long term into the future of anywhere between 50 and 60,000 a day, um, US a and this is like a day, a day. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we're, if you're, if you're buying in early and buying in now, expect a lot of marketing put, pushed over a sustained period of time, very high level. So that's good stuff. Yeah. What, what's your, do you guys have any partnerships, any uh, VCs, any, um, what's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've actually partnered with quite a, quite a good amount of the, um, uh, to be honest, like our private round, we really speaking took in a lot of investors from uh, the Terra ecosystem itself. Um, we were very particular that we didn't want to get, uh, you know, a lot of VCs on board. So if you look at our um, portfolio, we're, we're essentially partnered with SVC um, for our legal requirements. Um, we're partnered with OIG, which is um, the Oracle Investment Group. They're really, really heavy into games. Um, we've partnered with Lunatic Capital, um, which is um, essentially guys who are ex JP Morgan, because um, um, we're doing some stuff with banking that I'll touch uh, and, and come into as well. Um, we're also, uh, we've taken in uh, GT Capital, which is uh, just these OGs from the Terra ecosystem itself, guys that have been with the Terra ecosystem right from day one. Um, we've got uh, some of the very, very, you know, hugely influential people from the Terra ecosystem itself, like, um, you know, Midas and um, uh, Flamel, Nicholas Flamel. Um, so really speaking, what we've done is, you know, to sort of focus our attention on, on the people who can provide us with quality rather than, um, you know, quantity. Uh, we've not been you know, well, we've, we've been relatively lucky to sort of sell out all three rounds, um, you know, but, but that's one of the reasons we've been relatively lucky to have, uh, you know, our choice of picks when it comes to our investors as well. Um, in terms of like other partnerships that we're dealing with right now, yes, we do have some very, very exciting news, um, you know, some brand ambassadors uh, that are going to be signing with us in the next few days, both, um, you know, from the MMA side, from the NFL side, as well as from, uh, uh, from the FIFA side of things. Um, we've also got some very interesting partnerships that we're looking at for the coming season. Um, I'm going to say that it's going to be with a Premier League club for sure. Uh, we don't know to what extent it's going to be, but we can 
um, definitely say it's going to be either in stadium or shirt. Um, and this is going to be long term partnership. So like when when we look at, um, you know, taking on the big guys, we really are going to be taking on the big guys because we're not just taking on like DraftKings and FanDuel. We're also looking at like socios and social tokens. So, um, you know, our solution is really speaking geared towards sports and athletes. Um, and we're looking at like, you know, creating um, you know, economic value around athletes themselves, around brands, around um, you know what the athlete really stands for, being able to protect his intellectual rights and um, intellectual property in the process. And I see more and more athletes going, moving into crypto, and as as a result of you know like Jorge Masvidal is doing that. But um, do you, do you have any audits under your belt? We are getting our first audit done as we speak. Uh, we're actually talking to Certic for our first one. Uh, we're also talking to Halburn. Um, so we're going to make sure we have two audits done. One, at least one audit, uh, we're going to try to do before our public sale. Um, but I think that before we have gameplay, we will have uh, at least two audits done. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so another the- thing is that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, cut you off. Um, another thing is that we're actually trying to release our platform with the gameplay itself. So, um, you know, we're going to have a token release um, uh, with our TGE with gameplay, uh, which is going to be really interesting because like you're going to have a token that has utility release, um, you know, immediately um, the day that gameplay launches, uh, which is I, I'm going to say very, very rare in the blockchain world. Got it. So uh, the Cowboys, we, we broke the news here. We got Jorge Masvidal as a brand ambassador I, that I like super huge fan i bought his last five fights i mean before he even made it big with uh darren till um yeah. how did you land that what's the process of getting uh masvidal on did you talk to him yourself like what's that process like um we've been fortunate to actually work with some very very interesting partners to be honest um and and um, these guys are in the industry leaders when it comes to like sports partnerships um so to be honest like that's it's been a driving force for us when it comes to like you know who we've asked for and who we've got um You're going to see in the next year, we're going to have podcasts that are going to be coming out that are going to talk specifically to fantasy sports as well as to sports fans themselves. Um, And these are going to be run by like industry veterans, Um, you know, guys uh, and girls in the fantasy sports arena who have run fantasy sports, um, you know, TV channels, um, guys and girls in the fan in the sports arena, uh, you know, who have, um, you know, either been on sports channels or have been on, uh, uh, you know, fantasy sports um, channels. Uh, podcasts and and YouTube channels. Um, So Mm -hmm. really speaking, what we're doing is we're trying to build out a brand that really speaking talks to sports and sports fans specifically. Um, And and, uh, the way that we're doing it is uh, in two ways. One is in the partnerships that we're building, but two and more importantly is by involving the sports community in the the application itself. Um, You know, one of the things that we're very, very interested in is, um, you know, the association of team fan clubs, um, which are really in asset, you know, uh, game assets, um, you know, and and sports fans themselves. Um, You know, these team fan clubs are essentially owners owners of the game itself. Um, You know, so when you say shared ownership, how do you ensure shared ownership? You ensure shared ownership by making sure that um, you have as many owners as possible. And the owners themselves are actually... Um, uh, I would say invested in the platform itself, right? So uh, when you're talking about a fantasy sports platform, you're talking about fantasy sports players, you're talking about sports fans, you're, sp- you're talking about uh, you know sports content creators, guys that rely on the sports world or on teams, uh, you know that they support um, either for revenue generation or just for their daily you know uh, feel good factor. Um, and really speaking, these fan clubs are a way for you to one get involved, um, you know, and be more uh, involved with your fellow fans. Uh, but two and more importantly, it's, it's to sort of have this um, you know unending revenue source um, that's going to pay out really speaking into the future because like as long as you've got fantasy sports and sports you're going to have this revenue source that's paying out on a daily basis um, yeah. and, and the idea here is that um, these these team fan clubs um, really speaking they the way that they share ownership is um, by taking home profits from the platform itself like I said that five percent rake fee um, is really speaking distributed to these fan clubs so almost um, I would say 70 percent of that rake fee goes towards these uh, team fan clubs um, and and the owners that that um, uh, that that own these these clubs themselves that's fantastic so so you're saying that a way to continually generate income back, passive income back, is you claim a, a sports team as your yep. own and take ownership yep. of that sports team on Fan mm-hmm. Theory. So say like mm-hmm. I'm a fan of Man City, right? Yep. And so uh, I, I go, I, I go into, I go into that, and then of the rake fee that's getting paid out, the five percent, seventy percent of that five percent goes yep. even back to the owners of yep. these teams, whereas the thirty percent goes back to like you know whatever running this, running the whole platform. But the well, 30% actually gets burnt. What was that? 30%, 30% actually gets burnt. Burned? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that our rake fee works is like 40% goes to our, our, our stakers, which is you guys, the guys who own these fan clubs. 40% gets burnt. 10% goes to our liquidity providers, which is in our case, we provide protocol owned liquidity. So the liquidity providers are ourselves. Um, and then we've got 2% that goes to a charity platform and uh, 8% that goes to like the development efforts of the platform itself. So okay, that's, that's where I was, I was like, how do you make money here? <laughs> I was like, okay, there it is. There it is. Okay, got it. So to be honest, like we're not concerned about like the, 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 uh, development team itself making money because like our, our concept is that um, if we if, if you own the token and you make sure the token's doing well then you're doing well right I mean ideally speaking that's where our value comes from our value comes from the token itself our um, investors value comes from the token itself your value comes from the token itself got so it, we make sure it. the token does well we don't make sure that we're taking home money like um, if think of it this way like fiat is being printed every day right um, you want to make sure that your token is doing well you want to make sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to make sure your tokens got value like that's the real value right so um, yeah. the idea for us is that like everything that we that we're making we're pushing it into um it, back into the protocol itself either through protocol owned liquidity or or through our treasury which is essentially going to hold um you know assets that are going to back the token itself we're talking like gold assets like actual gold tokens uh that we're buying from the market so these gold tokens are eventually going to like back the token one is to one eventually at some point um i don't know when okay. in the future but it is going to back it yeah got it so ten, so is there we've gone over a lot in fan fury is there is there anything else to go over with with fan fury here okay yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, hit me with it yeah let me just let me just sort of um in, in just sort of go over a few like of the really really basic things about us like that really make us stand out uh, you know from the rest um one is obviously in terms of like our onboarding experience itself um you know the fact is that fantasy sports players and 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 just the general public in general you know they don't want to be concerned with fan with seed phrases and um you know uh, wallets and you know what is a blockchain um, you know they essentially just want to get on get off um so really speaking our onboarding and offboarding for for our users has been like a huge thing for us so one of the things that we've also invested in is to make sure that like the onboarding process is as smooth as possible which is to ensure you've got um you know social logins um you know logins with your phone number and password um this makes sure that like you know people who are used to a web 2 experience can continue with that web 2 experience into web 3 um and also i think like in terms of just uh, you know being able to move your funds in and out of the system um one of the things that we've done is to uh, tie up with a banking partner that gives us the ability to one uh, allow our users to on ramp and off ramp currency really really easily from pretty much any of the big six currencies um and two also have access to like um a swap facility between any of over a hundred different cryptocurrencies so think of the fact that like you can use sol to maybe buy fury and then participate in our game um you know this is something that like not not a lot of platforms are able to offer one um and to offer it in a way where it's um you know user experience is going to be um let's say uh, tailored to a, a fantasy sports user rather than a crypto user, right? I mean, you want your fantasy sports users to be as comfortable as possible. And our app is going to do that right from their onboarding to their connecting of their bank account. Um, and I think the step further really for us is going to be for us to be able to offer our own cards. Um, so being able to offer our own fan fury debit cards, um, which is to say that you'll be able to use fury in your daily life, uh, you know, being able to like use fury in your shopping or through, you know, Google, uh, Google pay or Apple pay or samsung pay um you know being able to really speaking offer that end-to-end -end experience for, for, for our users um right from um, you know gameplay to uh spending so to say oh that's amazing so from onboarding someone new to just getting them involved in the ecosystem and gameplay and then offboarding with uh with a debit card being able to use their stuff uh their coins wherever uh you you called it an end-to-end -end yeah, end experience which is uh fantastic uh, all right, Adrian, is there anything left with fan fear? Like I want to take out everything. I want to extract everything. Yeah, is there anything is. left? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so like I said, we will be, we will be offering like banking solutions coming, um, in the next like three months. Uh, this is essentially tied very closely into our fantasy sports game itself. Um, so the idea was like, uh, like I said, to be able to offer an end-to-end -end experience, um, and that end-to-end -end experience sort of led into the, um, in, into a space where we are really speaking, we will be able to offer, um, you know, an end-to-end -end banking solution. So you'll be able to, let's say, come in, um, you know, get a debit card. Um, if you pass KYC, you'll be able to get an IBAN number with that debit card. Um, so you'll be able to, let's say, have um, a direct deposit come into your Fan Fury account. We can give you a 10% interest rate on that, um, and then you can use the 10% interest that you get to essentially take part in your fantasy sports. Um, that's sort of the idea here. Um, so we've got long-term plans.
to sort of offer these things called no loss entries where um, you can like essentially tie up your um, your fixed deposits into like a into a into a long term sort of uh, one year <clears throat> plan and what this will do is we'll give you like a 5% interest rate on the on the fixed deposit and the other 5% what we'll do is we'll offer you like 20 games a month free to just come and participate in fantasy sports um, so like we can offer these things that like there's really no other platform fantasy sports crypto or otherwise that can come close to us in terms of the kind of reward mechanisms that we can put in place um, like right now just the basic reward mechanisms that we have of a cap five like a five percent cashback that itself blows people out the water. Um, that itself is something that people just can't compete with. So, um, you know, looking forward over the next three, four months to um, the kind of stuff that we'll offer once we have our banking card ready, um, it's going to be really, really interesting. Um, and then we've got NFTs coming. That's um, I think that's going to hit in um, June, July. These are like perpetual uh, yield NFTs. So once you own the NFT itself, you're going to have this perpetual source of income where um, essentially every month you're going to get a payout, but the payout is going to be gamified. So think of like you own Jaden Sancho um, and like Jaden Sancho has done badly this week. He hasn't scored. He's injured. Um, you know, he's in the bronze section of uh, this week's payouts. So you're getting like really, really bad payouts this week. But like next week, Jaden Sancho is killing it. He's got a hat trick. He's got match ball. He's finished in the goal section. You've got like hella, hella payouts, right? So the idea is like week on week, you want to make sure like your NFT is, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at what your NFT is doing because um, not only are you like like getting your weekly payouts but these are year on year right you're like competing on fantasy sports year on year essentially um, and when this player retires he essentially moves into this hall of fame um, sort of section where you're wherever he finishes if he finishes in that bronze section you're stuck with bronze rewards for the rest of your life man so sorry to say but um, you know if he finishes in the gold section you're stuck with gold rewards for the rest of your life so it's going to be really in important and interesting to see like people um, you know come in and, and buy these NFTs because there's only going to be like 250 of them that are going to be minted um, so like 250 NFTs um, and perpetual payouts right from month one um, that's coming in another three months. Um, we can touch on that if you want. And then we've got something called athlete social tokens uh, that we're going to be launching in towards the end of this year. Um, and really speaking, this is like the creme de la creme, right? Um, this is going to be like our, um, our, our sort of cherry on the cake, um, you know, being able to you know have social tokens that are like uh, Shaquille O'Neal's own social tokens called Shaq's let's say um, you know where he's going to be really speaking able to create his own economic value within this social token so think of like him being able to sell his own merchandise his own NFTs his own everything with his own currency so being able to generate revenue and um, and volume and value for this currency through his own products um, through let's say his partnerships with let's say Ronaldo or people like that so let's say using Shaq's to buy Ronaldo's perfume like this is stuff that we can do um and this is stuff that we're talking to athletes about right now like you know being able to create economic value for them like generational economic value for them it's not like economic value that goes away with like one shirt sale this is generational economic value that's going to continue to like give them and their you know next of kins over like you know generations to come so like this is inspirational stuff for the for the for the for the athlete and for the sports um sector itself um, and to be able to like feed off these two markets, like fantasy sports, sports fans, athletes, sports, sports, um, you know, personalities. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a heady mix. Awesome. Jeez Louise. Okay. So you've got NFTs that prepare, uh, create a perpetual source of income. You've got athlete social tokens coming in the end of the year and you've got a banking reward system to boot. Is there anything else? <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I, look, it, here's one thing that's a very apparent, Adrian, is that you are extremely excited and on fire about Fan Fury. Um, and I can't wait to share this with a whole bunch of other Cowboys who would be interested yeah. in this in this sector. Guys, if you're yeah. interested in Fan Fury, check out all the links down in the description down below. Um, and, and check out and join the socials. Check them out. Uh, Fan Fury is a, is a, operationally, it's in testnet right now. So it's, re it's, it's rearing, rarely Ready to go, go. here. Yeah, I mean, that, that the one thing I want to tell people is that, like, really speaking for, from a blockchain standpoint, where we're giving people the opportunity to come in and, like, test the platform before we launch, you know, um, actually say, like, you know, like, come really look at what you're going to get. Um, and I think that even in terms of the token launch itself, what we're doing is we have a fair token launch. Um, we're doing sort of a mango market scene where... Um, we, we, we've looked at other tokens and the way they launch with limited liquidity, you've got like these sky high, um, you know, uh, highs and troughs that you go through. We don't want to do that. So what we're doing is we're having a fair launch, um, uh, 
for our token where basically <clears throat> you're going to have five days over which um, the token is going to be on sale. Um, and the idea is that uh, we start with the token price at zero. Um, so you've got 25 million tokens in the market and then you've got um, five days over which people can come and deposit dollar amounts into that contract. So what happens at the end of that five days, depending on what the dollar amount is versus how many tokens are there. So let's say you've got 25 million tokens and let's say you have 25 million in deposits, you get a price of let's say a dollar. Um, and therefore what this does is it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a whale who puts in 100K on minute one, or if it doesn't matter if you're like a bot that comes in because obviously bots uh one of the ways that we've prevented that is by ensuring that you only have deposits right like because you because there's no token price you can't withdraw a token at a certain value so like really speaking all bots are going to have to do is come in deposit and then just wait so you you skim against bots you skim against whales and you make sure that like your entire community can participate they're all participating at the same price everybody gets in at the same price nobody has to ape in you can come in on the last day and get it at the same price as a person who's put in 100k on day one that's the beauty about the system it's it's as egalitarian as it gets um, and then by ensuring that as many people get it at the same price and and also launching with gameplay what we can ensure is that like the price at which the token launches even though it's fair value because there's utility on the token we can ensure that that util the, the 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 token price sort of very gradually goes up rather than drops on day one because you're eventually going to have sellers right but if you've got token utility that comes from the game that requires people to sell well we've got we've got buying pressure now so um you have an increased token value um so really speaking um we're very 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 excited about you know what we've got to offer right now and and like i said with protocol owned liquidity um we have a zero inflationary uh, reward system um it, it's all deflationary right now uh there is there are no inflationary uh, tokens that are going to be introduced into the system either through, through staking or liquidity providing it's all coming through profits itself um and and then in terms of like our treasury itself um you know uh, all the funds that are coming from the token sale it goes into uh, our treasury which is going to hold three assets um, we're holding AUST which is anchors uh, yield bearing token uh, it's going to hold S SGT tokens which is uh, Saber gold tokens each gold token is like one is to one with a gram of gold an actual gram of gold um, and then we're going to have P Luna which is like the principal part of the Luna token um, so what this is going to do is it's going to put our treasury in a position where it's an interest bearing treasury along with being an asset backed treasury Jeez Louise. When is this launching? A uh, week from now, two weeks from now. So we've got okay. our public sale going from um, April 15th on up to April 23rd. Um, April 23rd is when we do platform launch. <clears throat> Good deal. Guys, get involved if you if this is something that's in uh that's interesting to you stick with lizard brain just get into good simple projects and uh obviously adrian uh thank you so much for being here with me guys links in the description thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video aaron it was great to be